Hello and welcome to the Tournament Center. I'm Brian David Marshall. I'm here with Jerry Thompson. We're at the World Championships at Rome. Unfortunately, Jerry's playing in a PTQ today. I love it. <laughs> I'd rather be PTQing than playing in Worlds right now. <laughs> Jerry is a uh, PTQ champion, a veteran. Yeah. Uh, you're four and one right now with a deck that's pretty interesting. We were talking a lot on day one about how uh, people want to beat Jund. And we did a deck tech with Michael Jacob, who was talking about sideboarding in spreading seas in his uh, crab deck to beat Jund in games two and three. Jerry's playing a deck that takes that a little further. Why don't you walk us through a deck that you've been calling... Spread em <laughs> is uh, the name of the deck. That's, that's Louis Scott Vargas' name. Uh, typically, you know, you, you have a bunch of Cascade spells, and then you just do something broken with them, like get Swans and Seismic Assault, and you just kill them that way. This, I kind of, you know, grind it out a little bit more. Just Cascade into Spreading Seas and Convincing Mirage, turn all their lands into islands, and uh, right now there's not a lot of blue decks in Standard, so islands don't really do anything. I, 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 giving someone an island is the equivalent of stone raining. Them yeah, right basically, like nice colorless land, <laughs> it just does nothing. And if you do it on a, if you do it on a savage lands or a jungle, anything. Yeah, it's just any crazy. any tricolor land, they just get so mana screwed. You know, they can play like maybe a third of their spells. Right. So I mean, against Jun, their best hope is to play a putrid leech on turn two. But they're already having a hard time casting a putrid leech on turn two. Yeah, definitely. Because of all their lands coming to play sideways. Right. So what's, what's your game plan? How do you win? So you, you, you get to mess around with them for a couple turns, you're keeping them off their mana. What are you doing? Well, I mean, hopefully hopefully I win the die roll, hopefully I have a two drop, and then uh, from there, you know, like, if they play Putrid Leech, that's probably going to be the only spell they get to cast the entire game. And then uh, between, like, Ardent Please, Bloodbraid Elves, Ajani, like, I just kind of nickel and dime them out, eventually, like, play one of these two Sphinxes, and uh, hopefully that finishes the game. If things get too out of hand, I can reset with Day of Judgment, and then hopefully, you know, they can cast any spells. They're locked out of a color or two. And it seems like a very, very straightforward deck. How, how often does it go according to script? Um, I mean, today I've been running pretty good. Like, I haven't cast a, a turn two Spreading Seas or Mirage very often, and the deck is still performing pretty well. So, I mean, I think, I think even if you don't uh, execute your game plan perfectly, you know, you still have a, a very good shot of winning. Like, sure. I have a ton of life gain, a, a ton of cards that just stall. So, I mean, you don't even have to come on very quick. Right. So, I mean, surprisingly, sometimes the, the Ajani Vengeance plan is just good enough. Oh, yeah, it's a sick backup plan. So let's talk a little bit about your sideboard. Yeah, you might be saying, uh, Jerry, this deck, not very good against Boros. And I'd be like, you're right. So, you know, wall reverence, pretty uh, pretty standard sideboard card against Boros, but we don't stop there. I imagine these guys come in. Oh yeah, Rocks War Monk, those are pretty good too. You know, just some more life gain stuff, uh, some more things to stall the ground. I guess these guys? Oh yeah, Baneslayer Angel, come on. These obviously come in against Boros too, but like, you know, these spreading seas, these convincing mirages, they're not very good. They just aren't. You know, they have Core Sky Fisher, things like that, and all their spells are really cheap. They have a ton of fetch lands. You know, if they leave those uncracked, sometimes you just can't even get them, you know? So we just, uh, we have a new plan. We just cascade into a bunch of Death Duelists. Just hide behind those. So I want to just talk about some of the cards that you're playing here in terms of the, where people regard them as... Oh, oh there we go. Death Duelist, uh, also, you know, maybe a Tarmogoyf, <laughs> or perhaps uh, this, this Convincing Mirage that at one point was a, a goblin guide. <laughs> so you've basically constructed your deck for this <laughs> out, of, out of cards that people had rejected as being playable and were using as, as in preparation for other events. Yeah, uh, Spreading Seas, that was a lightning bolt. And then these Spreading Seas I all got, you can see the stamps on them, I all got from people who played Worlds. Just like, hey, you have any Spreading Seas in your sideboard? <laughs> thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, one of the Italian dealers had these. I don't know why, but you know. So do you, do you think this is a, a very realistic uh, deck for standard? Someone's going out to FNM this coming week? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I played against John twice, uh, crushed them both times. It wasn't even, you know, they were, they were having fun. They're like, oh, look at your funny cards, you know, and then they had five islands and it wasn't fun for them anymore. <laughs> you know, it was just like typical Magnavore or whatever deck, you know, they right. just hated it. And I, I mean, it looks like you only have eight ways to do this, but because of the cascade. Oh yeah, I mean, you, you're I, able I've, to do this from turn two to four. Exactly, I've, I've 20, Virtual spreading seas, you know, four of Johnny's, and then just wrath and some, some fatty flyers, and that's it. But awesome. yeah, I mean, un until people start playing islands, I think this deck is great. So, well, there you have it. It's a, a, a very, very interesting alternative from a guy who's given you a lot of good decks over the years. If you've read his column, uh, give it a try at Friday Night Magic or on Magic Online. Uh, we'll be back with more Tournament Center from Rome. This is Brian David Marshall and Jerry Thompson.